Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Curiosity Studios at the Pacific Science Center in beautiful downtown Seattle. I am so happy you could all join us today for a really special uh, preschool program all about some really old things. So let's go ahead and get started. Today, we are gonna learn about the really, really old. And for that, I think we're gonna need a, a very, very old and special friend. Well, let's see if I can go ahead and start uh, shouting out and ask him to come along. Uh, their name is Sam, so just say, uh, hey Sam, can you come out? Uh, uh, Sam, Sam, go ahead and come out. Go ahead and cheer him on, cheer him on. That is great, oh, there he is. Look everyone, it's my friend Sam. Sam, as you can see, is a clam. And so we are going to explore, oh, what was that, Sam? Oh, oh, you want to say good morning. Oh, go ahead and say good morning, Sam. <laughs> All right, Sam, well, let's learn about your adventure under the sea and what happens to you as you grow up. To get started, oh, Sam, what was that? Oh, you want some things that, uh, to help us learn, share, uh, and explore together. I think that is a great idea, Sam. It's really smart to have some guidelines to help us share, explore, and have fun. So when we are getting started today, it's really important that you have an adult friend in the room with you. They can help you chat and engage in these activities that we have planned out. Just go ahead and uh, have your adult friend, whether it be a parent or a guardian or uh, a, a older sibling or just an adult friend. They can help chat online. We love curiosity and we love questions. So be sure to share those observations you have and your questions on the obs uh, chat feature on YouTube. My friend Zita is there to help answer a lot of questions and share some of your observations with us. To get started, I have a question for you. Well, what was that, Sam? Do you have a question too? <laughs> okay, well, let's go ahead and ask them. Uh, Sam wants to know, are you watching this program with anybody? Go ahead and give Zita a big hello on that chat and let Zita know who you're experiencing this program with. Please use a group name or a, uh, a real name. And then just to let you know, this program is going to be about 20 to 30 minutes. Is that everything, Sam? Oh, okay. Well, in that case, let's get started. Here we go. Today, I want to learn all about fossils. You see, Sam is a clam but Sam is a very special clam. You see, he was living, but he wants to tell about a story about another clam that survived, that turned into something actually really, really special and survived for millions of years after it turned into this really special thing. So Sam, do you just want to go ahead and tell that story? Okay, Sam, well, let's go ahead and tell that story. This is the story of Sam the Clam and how he became a fossil. Once upon a time, there lived a happy little clam, Sam the Clam. Sam lived at the bottom of the ocean where he was very happy feeding off of microorganisms and doing other clam things. It was a good life. Sam was happy, happy as a clam, so to speak. <laughs> Sam lived a very long life in the ocean, but after a while, Sam died. Now, some people would think that our story ends here, but actually, this is where Sam's story really begins. Things started to happen to Sam. Since Sam died, where he was, there was a lot of sand. He was quickly buried under all of the sand that settled on top of him. 
before he even had a chance to decompose or become fish food. Next, he was covered up by another layer of sand, and then another layer of sand, and then another layer of sand, and then another layer of sand, layer of sand until Sam was on the bottom of one heaping, huge, heavy mess of sand. Then something different happened to Sam. Water and sand started oozing into Sam's shell. After a long, long time, it filled up his entire shell. Then the sand in and around Sam was pushed together for so long and with so much weight on top of that, the sand hardened into a rock. How long do you think it took to happen? That's right, that took millions and millions of years to happen. Since the sand was inside Sam's shell, when it hardened, the rock turned out to be the exact same size and shape as Sam the clam. It looked exactly like him, except for it was a rock. Sam had been fossilized. That's a big word. So let's practice that one together. On the count of three, let's say fossil together. One, two, three. Fossil. <laughs> That's sounding great. Thanks so much. All right. That's when something else, after Sam became a fossil, something else happened to Sam. We don't know exactly what it was. Maybe the sand on top, the sand on top of Sam was washed away by water. Or maybe an earthquake pushed apart the ground upward and Sam got pushed up too. Maybe a paleontologist dug down and found Sam. Someone like you or me, a scientist who digs things up from the earth to look for old living things. Or maybe, maybe it was a combination of all of those things happened. One way or the other, Sam found his way back to the surface. And now scientists like you will be able to study Sam the fossil. Sam the fossil clam happily ever after. So that's what we're going to explore today. Uh, we're gonna explore how Sam's and creatures like Sam's turn into rocks by a process called becoming a fossil. Let's go ahead and say that word again on the count of three. One, two, three, fossil. <laughs> Well, that, that, yeah, that was, that, was, that was exactly right, Sam. <laughs> I want to explore more about these fossil creatures and see if, and these fossil rocks, and see if we can learn about some of the creatures that have been turned into fossils. There's lots of different types of fossils, but there are three that I kind of want to focus on today. They are petrified, mold, and trace fossils. So, uh, Sam, what was that? You, you, you brought more fossil friends? Well, you want to share them with everybody? <laughs> Sam, that's great. Thank you for bringing your fossil friends with us. Let's go ahead and check out some of the fossil friends that Sam has brought along to share with us today. The first one we have is this one right here. Now, friends, here's the thing. There are some big words, and I know that a lot of us are still trying to figure out how to read big words, and that's okay. The key is you take a big word, like uh, this one right here, 
and you break it down. You make it into smaller words. So instead of reading the really big word, let's just read the really small words together. So in this example, it's am, mo, night. Let's say that together, okay? Am, mo, night. Ammo night. That was fantastic, great. And this is what one looks like. This rock feature right here is over 135 million years, years old. It was formed when like a layer of rock, when this creature laid into the sand, made an oppression, and then rocks filled into that oppression and created this special rock right here. What can you observe about this special creature that we have right in front of us today? Can we figure out what we think it might have looked like? Oh, I'm hearing a lot of great observations. Some people say they see ridges. Some see the circles or spiral. Some said this animal must have a really hard shell. There seems to be a big opening where rock kind of filled into the shell. I wonder if this is what the entire animal looked like. Well, let's see. Oh, that's an ammonite. Ammonite. It was like a big giant squid, but it carried a shell around it and it floated in the ocean eating tiny fish and things like that over 135 million years ago. That was awesome. Thanks, Sam, for bringing this friend. Oh, you, you, you've got another water creature friend? Oh, Sam, that makes sense. I mean, you live in the ocean. A lot of your friends must be from the ocean. All right, friends, this one is, let's look at those individual smaller words. Try, low, bite. Let's do that again. Try, low, bite. That's great. So now we can put it all together and make our big word. Try low bite. Nice. That's what this guy is right here. It's even older than our ammonite friend. This one is a rock that's over 400 million years old. And we could see, maybe I even have it upside down. We could see a big bump right here and some nice rocky edges and uh, ridges. What observations do you have of this special, really ancient rock? Oh yeah, you're right. It is broken on the bottom. And that happens a lot to rocks. They break. And so sometimes we don't get a full picture from our fossils of that living thing. That was a really good observation. I liked and I'm thankful you shared that. All right, so I think we have a hard shell and regis. Let's see what it actually looks like. <gasps> Friends, look at that trilobite. It looks like a big cockroach going across the sea bottom, eating up and spurring around. Actually, some of those features look really familiar. There are animals that look a lot like trilobites today. My friend Jen out in Seattle said that she saw a horseshoe crab that almost looked exactly like that. Even though these trilobites are over 400 million years ago. They may have evolved and turned into different types of creatures. That's amazing. These were examples of mold uh, fossils. The fossils made impressions, or the animals made impressions, and then the rocks filled in those impressions to give us an idea of the shape and size of those creatures. But some fossils don't have the creatures at all. They are called trace fossils. Let's say that together. Trace fossils. Nice. 
basically as living things, we leave things behind, uh, uh, little signs that we were around. And there's a special one I have right here that Sam brought with him. It is called a coprolite. Uh, uh, again, that was a big word. So let's practice it together. Take this really big word and break it down into a smaller word. So let's do that together. Co, pre, lights. Nice. Let's put it all together. Copri lights. That's this thing right here. Oh, friends, they are so small and delicate. I think we may need to use our other camera to really observe them. So let's go ahead and switch into our magic view. There we go. Now, friends, look at these tiny little things. They don't look like they were living, but they're signs that life used to be around. You know what? They kind of look a little bumpy, a little round, like there was a big pile of something really, really soft that the rocks got into. Oh, friends, I know what this is. What was that, Sam? Are you going to tell me? <laughs> Sam, you're holding on. I'm holding on to poop. That's what this is. It's scat. It's poop from another animal. But remember that they got turned into a fossil. This is now a rock. And it's a trace element that an animal over 22 million years ago. Well, I had to go to the bathroom out in the woods. A tiny little mammal left a little part of the bathroom right behind. And then that got turned into a rock, leaving clues about that animal. Oh, friends, that's a little, oh, I don't know about that. You know, I was thinking about these trace fossils and uh, these different types of fossils. Oh, let's bring that camera back. And I'm wondering, you know, I'm a human. I'm wondering if I could leave a trace fossil behind. And I think that's a great experiment or an activity you could explore at home. Oh, those are some of those examples of those trace fossils. That top one up there, that's that scat I was talking about. That's that little poop. And then we also have, well, footprints. Sometimes we leave footprints behind. And then those footprints could be turned into rocks. And those rocks could tell us a lot about those animals. Like these footprints here, they look kind of familiar, almost like dinosaur footprints. Oh, there was a dinosaur that walked in this area. You know, friends, I'm wondering if we can make our own trace fossils of ourselves. I've got this great activity. And there are some things that you and your adult friend are going to need to do it. You can also find this activity online. But basically, we are going to use Play-Doh to make a handprint. This is what you're going to need. You are going to need some salt, three-fourths cup. You are going to need some flour, three-fourths of a cup. And then you're going to need a little bit of water. All you have to do is make a little dough. So you measure out your ingredients and you pour them right inside our bowl. And then, particularly with young kids and the dexterous little fingers, they could dig in and they start kneading the dough and kneading the dough and making a big ball out of the snow, uh, dough. Sometimes you could add food coloring to make it different colors, or you could do all sorts of things as you mash it all up. Now, after you mash it all up, you end up with a ball of dough, kind of like this. Now, let's roll out our dough and make our own trace fossils. For that, we need our magic webcam. There we go. And so now I got my big dough, uh, dough that I rolled up 
And this is a great activity to do with kids. And I'm gonna smash it down a little bit, just so I make a nice big imprint. And I have a lot of different surface area to put down different things. There's lots of different things that you could put in here. I liked going to the beach and collecting some animals and artifacts I wanted to make a fossil of. So I have my toy fish, which I could push down. And I've got my, oh, look up for this, friends. It's a seashell that I found at the shore. And I'm going to make a big impression right there. And then you don't even have to go to the beach to find a living thing you can make an impression of. Maybe you can find a leaf, at the, a fallen leaf at the park. So you can put her right there. And all you have to do is push down just a little bit, being careful not to break your objects. Imagine all of that weight and all of that pressure that Sam experienced when he became a fossil. And then the objects go away and they leave behind impressions, trace fossils in the dough. After that, what you could do is put it in your oven at 200 degrees for three hours. And you can make your own special fossils that you could keep. You could put some, I use my handprint because I wouldn't make a trace fossil for myself. So I just go ahead and I press my hand inside. And then I had my dinosaur toy so I could decorate it and I made dino footprints going up my finger. And you could paint it and put your name on it, put the dates. And I made this when I was really young, maybe about four or five years old. And my mom is still keeping it hanging up on her wall. So it is a fossil that you could keep forever. Just put it right back into your oven at 200 degrees for about three, maybe four hours. And let's go ahead and switch back our views. Oh, there's that camera again. And now you could have a fossil that you could keep for a really long time. But friends, there was that other type of fossil I also wanted to explore. The kind where bone turns into rock. And that's this one right here. Look at this. I wonder what it could actually have been. Like I said, sometimes you only get a piece of an animal. It looks really, really long. And I don't know, there's a big section right there. I wonder if this was like a big edge or really, really sharp. Hmm. Oh, friends, I think I know what this is. This is a part of a dinosaur bone, but it's not the whole dinosaur. I think that this was a dinosaur claw from a raptor. Even though we only have a small piece of the dinosaur, we can imagine what the bigger animal looked like and what it did just from a small piece. So if it had a big claw, kind of like an eagle talon, I'm guessing that this scene loved to eat meat. And I know a lot of us are missing the Pacific Science Center right now. And we really wanted to explore.
Good morning, everybody. We hope that you've enjoyed today's session. It sounds like we lost Michael a little bit. I think his internet feed may have been fossilized, um, and sometimes that happens. But I really enjoyed looking at the coprolites and looking at the different fossils that he brought and showed with us today. And I think that experiment where you can take Play-Doh, you can make dough yourself, make fossil tracks, and then bake it and have something that you can preserve is a pretty fun activity to do today. Uh, I put in the comment section, you can also do that with clay or Play-Doh. And one of my favorite things that I love to do is to make it into a game. So you can take your Play-Doh and you can take different shapes and objects and hiding without anybody seeing, you can press your shape into that. And then just like a paleontologist, you can have somebody else guess which shape you use to make that impression. So I think that that is a pretty fun thing to try. Michael, have you ever played that guessing game to see which shape was put into the, into the Play-Doh or the dough? Absolutely. And it's a really fun game that you could play with your friends uh, and explore, share, and have fun together. All right, friends. Uh, let's go ahead and go ahead and thank you for so much for joining us. And thanks to my friend Zita for also jumping in and having fun with us. I'm happy to be here. I really appreciate that support and that sharing that we can have with our friends. And I hope that you continue to do that support and sharing with your friends. So please uh, fill out a survey to help us learn about the different experiences, uh, to kind of improve these lessons for the school year. Please support these programs at the Pacific Science Center so we can bring back those dinos and you can see those dinos um, in our galleries. And then finally, friends, if, uh, oh, there you are. Hey, and I want everybody to stay curious. Go to pacificsciencecenter.org and look for the curiosity at home for activities like the pressing and uh, making a fossil, that matching game that Zita just talked about, and so many other activities that you could share explore and have fun the really important thing is help us by filling out that survey give us our supports and of course stay curious thanks everybody for joining us <laughs>